I despise you killing and raping. You're despicable. Are you my judge? It's just you should be punished. I'm going to chop off your arm. So are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check these high hats, take things, moving through the rubbish. Party robots, break from staff, all you rubbish. Time's ticking. Yeah, if someone was going to chop off your arm for some alleged misconduct, you'd really want to know that they were independent, that they weren't taking orders from anybody else, and they were just looking at the merits of your particular case. So, um, thank you. That was, of course, the Wu-Tang. I'm sure you all knew that anyway. But now we're going to look at judicial independence. Uh, we looked previously at uh, neutrality, and we decided that that was largely about the appointment of uh, our judges, that we should be appointing people who would not allow their personal prejudices to uh, intrude upon or interfere uh, with the decision-making of, uh, of their judgment. We are now going to look at the way in which the outcome should be free of any third-party influence. Indeed, the whole process should be free of third-party influence. And we're, we're going to start by looking at these six lovely pictures. Now, if I were to ask you which of these pictures was the best, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? It's quite clearly uh, the one on the top left. Um, so we, we know it. Anyone knows that that's, this one up here is right. But now we're going to say, well, there's 500 pounds attached to that. And you might say, well, how does that change anything? And I say, well, because that picture up there, the top left, that's by Oscar. That's by my son. And you at that point should be thinking, hang on a minute. I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with that particular decision because Mr. Floyd quite clearly has a dog in this fight. He has a horse in this race. He has a vested interest in the outcome of this particular competition. So am I a fit judge to sit in arbitration of this particular case? No, absolutely not. I am not independent. I have a vested interest in the outcome of this particular case. And that questions my independence. So what is independence? Independence is the idea that the judiciary is separate and insulated from all other forces. Nobody else gets to interfere with the course of justice. The course of justice runs smooth and true, free as much from the influence of third parties as by the bias or prejudice of a particular judge. The courts, critically, are not an instrument of government policy. The courts are not there to do what the government wants. They are independent of the government. They operate according to the principles of natural justice and the rule of law, or we could say they operate at arm's length. And there are Chinese walls, there are insurmountable barriers that exist to keep the justice uh, the 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 uh, application of justice separate from politics, and here's here's a very good example, just a nice little definition there uh, about uh, judicial independence. That's from uh, F. B. Uh, William Kelly. Um, so, is the judiciary separate in the UK? We look at it in two sentences. In senses, we look at it as independence of office. Uh, that uh, we have apolitical appointments. We know that already. That they're free of political influence. Uh, appointments comes through the judicial appointments committee, and they're supposed to be neutral. But then we look at how they actually operate. The salaries are fixed. What that means is if the judge uh, offers a decision with which the government disagrees, they can't dock his pay. The pay of these guys is set by independent commissions. And you can't sack them unless they've been some, doing something really dodgy, like uh, looking at pornography at work, which three of them apparently were doing in March 2015. So those three that were sacked in 2015 were not sacked because they produced uh, decisions critical of government or indeed of anybody else, but rather because they were caught watching websites that they shouldn't have been watching uh, while on my time and indeed your time. We also have independence of process. Nobody is allowed to go in there and interfere with the course of justice. We follow the rule of law, and the rule of law says due process must be observed. It can't be interfered with. No one can seek to influence judicial decision. Uh, they can't overturn or reject a judicial decision. Uh, decisions can be appealed, uh, but that's an entirely different thing altogether. And you can't comment on anything that's going through the courts. You can't comment on issues sub judice. Now, what does that mean? Um, it means that uh, you can't say, for example, as David Blunkett did while Sajid Badat was being tried, that he was a very real threat to the country. It was nearly uh, Blunkett that wound up in court uh, in 2003 because he was uh, charged with contempt. He was interfering with the process 
of uh, of uh, of the uh, of the trial. Uh, Boyer would get two footballers who kicked the living daylights out of some poor lad in the Leeds nightclub, also in 2003. Um, the Sunday Mirror published an article, uh, an interview with the father, where he said, oh, these boys are never going to get a fair trial. My son will be denied justice. And because of that, he was denied justice. This was one of the reasons why the case against Boyer and Woodgate collapsed. And the two of them walked out, or one walked out with a reprimand. Um, you can't interfere with justice. Once it started, it has to go off. It has to do its thing. It's as simple as that. So judicial independence. The judiciary has to be independent of political process. And now I'm going to go into a particular example in great detail because I'm fascinated by it. And it uh, should hopefully uh, fascinate you. Now, we're going to look at something called... Uh, the Attorney General. Now, the Attorney General is the superintendent of the legal system. He sits in the back, you know, kind of pulling the strings, deciding whether or not trials go forward. He is officially supposed to be independent, but he is also a politician. He's a member of cabinet. And what we had here was the uh, was a trial whereby British Aerospace was accused of bribing the Saudis. Uh, it was bribing the Saudis to ensure that the Saudis bought a lot of weapons from the UK. Now, this had been going on since Thatcher's time. Thatcher had negotiated this incredible deal called Al Yamama. Uh, in order to get this deal through, these characters had to bribe all of these Saudi princes. Um, and um, yeah, I think pretty much everyone knew this was happening. Um, however, as the trial was going through, the Saudis said, look, you have to stop this. You have to stop this trial. And they said, no, we can't because you know this is not part of, uh, that's not how we do things in this country. We have an independent judiciary. And uh, I'm afraid that if your guys have been taking bribes, they will go to jail just as the guys who've been giving uh, your Saudi princes bribes have been, um, will, will go to jail. At which point the Saudis said, well, okay, that's fair enough. Uh, however, if you do that, we, with, we will withhold critical information uh, on terrorism that will affect your national security. At which point, the Attorney General pulled the plug on the trial. He said, no, it has been necessary to balance the need to maintain the rule of law against the wider public interest. In other words, the wider public interest is served by us giving, um, uh, stopping a trial uh, so as not to embarrass the uh, Saudi royal family. And um, that was kind of embarrassing. I'm not quite sure what three is up there. That shouldn't be there either. Uh, but uh, we've got that idea there that the, the judiciary was interfered with uh, by the, uh, by, the um, by, by the politicians. The politicians interfered with our judicial service. And here's a very good example of the judiciary not actually being independent. Fortunately, it's the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. And obviously, I've been looking at this for a long time. You can read that there, and uh, we can have a look into it uh, in class. So that's Al Yamama. The Attorney General is a funny uh, little position. He is the chief legal advisor to government, but he's also the guardian of the public interest. Uh, when it comes to the operation of the courts. He superintends the uh, Crown Prosecution Service, which means he is in a somewhat compromised position. Uh, he's also director of the Serious Fraud Office. Uh, so he, he superintends the director of the, of the Serious Fraud Office. It's a complicated exercise, but certainly I think here we had a suggestion that the independence of the judiciary was compromised uh, by the Attorney General's actions. Um, it wasn't the first time that he'd done this. In the Iraq war, he advised on the legality of the Iraq war. In cash for peerages, he kind of pulled the, uh, pulled the, uh, pulled the plug on that particular trial. Um, it was not good. Uh, BAE, well, we've talked about that already. Uh, he has been criticised, um, and there are two criticisms, both from Labour politicians against a Labour administration. These are from uh, pre-2010. The key point here is that justice is supposed to be blind and isolated. Justice is blind. She is not allowing her prejudices to intrude upon the exercise of judgment. And what's more, we stick her on a desert island and we're surrounded by sharks so that nobody can influence those particular decisions. No one is in a position to go in and unduly influence the exercise of justice. So justice in the United Kingdom is independent and neutral. 
and uh, here's a few silly little videos for you to watch uh, just going over that uh, what I will say is this the whole idea is if you have a case if you have a legal system that is independent and neutral then what it means is that you, know, you have your case you have your guilt you have your verdict it doesn't matter who the judge is you can replace judge a with judge b and supposedly get the same outcome and then you can replace him with judge c and get the same outcome you're only you're only ever going to get that if your judiciary is neutral and independent that means that the outcome of a case is not dependent upon the person who is hearing it. Now, on Stonet, we have an awful lot of resources uh, on uh, the judiciary. Hopefully this is going to take me there. Yep. Eventually, I was logged in earlier. Uh, here we go. Is it here? Oh, no, not that one. Sorry, this one. Um, there we go. So lots and lots and lots of material here on the judiciary, both from me and from Mr. Barker. I've gone through this very, very quickly. I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. You can certainly follow these ones up uh, here. You can look at uh, introduction there from uh, Mr. Barker, uh, something on independence, a couple of things on neutrality there, and uh, we'll pick it up next lesson. It's complicated. You probably won't have followed it this time. However, you will follow it next time, and I look forward to answering your questions. Speak to you soon. Bye now.